My name is Lindsay, and today here we have a guest with us. Um, and please introduce yourself. My name is Michael San Francisco, and I'm a professor and dean of the Honors College at Texas Tech University. Perfect. And can you tell me a little bit more about the program? All right. So the Clark Scholar Program actually started long ago. This is its 25th or 26th year now. And uh, so uh, basically the, the major uh, purpose of the program is to bring in high school students and give them a research intensive opportunity working one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one with a faculty member. And at Texas Tech University, we have 11 colleges and a school of law plus a health sciences center. And Clark scholars who get selected can work with any of our faculty in any, virtually any discipline, all the way from chemical engineering to biological sciences, physics, cancer research, or Wow. any place in the humanities. So they can do classics or English or law. Okay, so it's not just get engineered towards sciences. It can be a really broad range. Correct. Okay, and whenever you guys are going through the application process, do you guys try and get a wide variety of students or do you just kind of, whichever ones are the best, you pick from there? Yeah, so that's a good question because, you know, we have a huge applicant pool. We do not mm -hmm. advertise. And oh, wow. We do not advertise. and. Uh, Last year, we got about 530 applications for 12 slots wow. from all over the world. And so we get people, applicants from China, India, Canada, Australia, Germany, Saudi Arabia, oh Europe, and all 50 states. We probably haven't gotten anybody from Hawaii so far, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of far. <laughs> I know, but it's no further away than China. That's you know. true. That's true. Even further. But the students overall are of a very high caliber, as you can well imagine. Mm -hmm. And uh, the application process requires them, of course, they have to give us all their transcripts and all their scores and SAT and ACT, whatever they've taken. Mm -hmm. And some places they don't have that opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. In some places. So, so we, we can waive it appropriately. It's not mandatory. But we need to show, to see that they have put themselves in a challenging academic environment mm -hmm. in high school, through of high school. Course. And they have to be at least 17 years of age to apply and enter the program. Okay, and there's no exceptions to that. Like if you're 16 mm -hmm. and like an extremely exceptional student wanting to go to college soon, there's no exceptions. Correct. Okay, okay. In the past, we used to accept 16 year olds, but then the university has all these rules about minors and this and that and the other. And so we just keep it. You know, mm -hmm. Nevertheless, we still have to be trained and all of that. Of course. Um, but then the, the application process requires that they provide all of that basic information. And then they have to write two or three essays. One is on how the program will benefit them. Mm -hmm. And then the other two are about their research and what they wish to pursue and why. Mm -hmm. so applicants have already done research. And in those cases, I'll expect them and hope that they would reflect a little bit on that research. Mm -hmm. right? Of course. So having done research is a plus, but it's not, not that important because many times we'll accept lots of students who've never had any research. Uh -huh. They have a good rationale for wanting to do research now. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. And so you're not going to hold it against a student who comes from like Wyoming and just like doesn't have the same opportunities Correct. as someone from like Boston. Absolutely true. Okay. Correct. Okay. So we are looking more for that intellectual piece. So if someone says they've done research, I'll check one box and say you've done research. Now what have you told me about it? Okay, yeah. Most Very important. often they say I did research at MIT in the summertime or whatever, but they don't say two more words about it. That's meaningless to me. Yeah. That's yeah. very true. Okay. That makes sense. And okay. Then, and then, sorry. No, uh, go ahead. It's part of the application. So then they also have to provide uh, three letters of recommendation. Mm. Basically, they give us the contact information. We send out a, 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 a special uh, form to mm -hmm. the evaluator, and they will give us uh, certain scores, and they will write little comments about students on very specific criteria. So we, it's a holistic application. Okay. And then how does the, is there like a committee that picks the applicants or how does it go about getting chosen? I'm sure it's a so huge it's, process. It's tough, right? As yeah. you can well imagine. And we have, last year we had five rounds of review. 
Wow. Yeah. So I will do like an initial first screen, right? Mm -hmm. Make sure everything's complete and appropriate. And of course, I have staff who help me. And then once we're done with that, then we'll start going through and I'll start saying, okay, I'll farm out the humanities applications to people in the human faculty. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll farm out the engineering ones to some engineering faculty. Mm -hmm. Physics, if there's some very specific things. And then the health sciences center as well. Where okay. All areas of research from, you know, cancer to, to uh, arthritis to gerontology. I mean, you name it. Whatever goes on at Texas Tech University, students have access to. They'll find it. Okay. And so is there any minimum GPA or test scores required? I think you mentioned there, you do like to see the SATs and ACTs, but it's not required per se. Yeah, we don't. I mean, if, if they've struggled a lot through high school and stuff, then of course, the likelihood of them getting in is, is low. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, you have, we had to, sometimes I had to make that decision and parse the, the application credentials appropriately because it depends sometimes on the environments from which they come. Mm -hmm. I try to, to keep, keep the group, um, you know, so that uh, there's an element of diversity but it's not the sole criterion. Okay. Know? And diversity of backgrounds, diversity of environments from which people come because they enrich one another. Mm -hmm. place. That's very true. Okay. So you do put some thought, but it's not, just like research, it's not like the Correct. most important thing. There's so many factors. Absolutely. So what would you say the most ideal candidate in your mind is? It's so hard, I'm sure to say. It is indeed. So, you know, finally, so we go through these multiple rounds of review and many times I'll send a um, note to the faculty and I'd send them like 20 or 30 applications. I'll say, pick your top two. And they'll send me back 15. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, you're not helping me a lot. Yeah. And so then it becomes really hard. So it's like, you know, uh, how do you split hairs? And so mm -hmm. then we look very carefully at what the teachers have said about them. Mm -hmm. okay. And then I, I have one secret formula, but I can't share that because then everybody's going to do Then something. everyone knows. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> we won't but, make you share your secrets. <laughs> right, right. But I, I look for people in the bigger picture who have a, a sense of not only furthering their own worlds mm -hmm. and through research, and they have to have a good rationale, but also who look to the bigger, broader picture of the betterment of humanity. Okay, that makes sense. You know, and so, I mean, somebody wants to do classics and they want to think through some, you know, great thinkers or whatever. That's all great. But there has to be something in their past that, that reflect on some other bigger thing. And to me, those are the kinds of people I'd like to see in my environment because they, 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 can, they can work towards the future. Okay, that makes sense. I want them to be really good world citizens. Mm -hmm. And so how do you guys encourage that deer in the program to become these good world citizens? You know, so, yeah, uh, we don't do anything actually specific in that realm. <laughs> though, uh, for this past year, for example, we were at our Wind Energy Museum mm -hmm. here in town. It's a beautiful museum. And so wind power... Uh, energy museums has everything from the very early days of windmills and turbines and their purposes to the modern day mm -hmm. this turbine. And while we were walking, you know, I commented on, on an element that was used by ranchers in the past and the bags that they had with water on the side of the animal. I'm just telling you a little story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's and, fine. I like uh, it. <laughs> but, but and the bags were made from material that actually sweated. Mm. So the, the cool water, you know, as there's some evaporation, it sweats, okay? Mm -hmm. it cools the side of the horse. Uh -huh. like, oh, how cool is that? So the man gets his water and then the horse gets cooled. Yeah, so it's not wasting anything too. Two bags on either side. But the material of which those bags were made, and I looked at the student because I talk about, and I give them lectures because I'm a microbiologist. And so I talk about microplastics in the environment and we talk mm -hmm. about this and that and the other. And two students came to me and said, you know that material that was used on the bags? We can go and do something with it. And I said, hooray. And so <laughs> actually working, now they've gone back, one to Chicago, and one, actually one is in Chicago and one's in Colorado. <laughs> and they've gone back home, but we are working still to try and develop something. 
Oh, that's very cool. Okay, so just taking what you guys see and making something even cooler out of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, very nice. And one oh. of them was doing research in neurobiology and the other one was doing research in, I forget, but, but this is something, you know, that they are seeing some common ground. Mm -hmm. So do you often see this where they have an idea of what they want to come in and research and then their path kind of deviates? Does that happen often? Oh, yes, indeed. And for, for the, you know, I've gone through many, many over the many years now, but for the few I stay in touch with, mm -hmm. yeah, they're in different spaces and different things now. Sure. Uh, but, but the key is that they use their minds effectively and be good citizens. Okay. And where do you, would you say most of the students go off to? Do they go to like the IVs or do they um, go back to like their homes? Like what's kind of like the future of most of your program attendees? Right. So they, for the most part, they'll be at Caltech, Harvard, Stanford, MIT, Yale, Princeton, and some do come to Texas Tech as well. Nice. So, yeah, it's great. And, uh, you know, for me, the, the primary purpose of the program is not to recruit them to Texas mm -hmm. Tech. Okay. It's to give them the experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the perfect reason. Okay. You will forever be in that past. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes. And so would you say that you guys like form a community? Does like the, does a network continue on afterwards? Like, do you guys stay in touch? Like, yeah. is there a job network or anything like that for attendees? So yeah, that's, that's interesting. It's not as sophisticated as one might think, though they do have uh, their Facebook sites. Mm -hmm, of course. Facebook interactive site and, and occasionally then past people will jump in and send their little thing. But I'm not a kind of social media kind of guy. Uh -huh. I'm old school, so I have a cell phone, you know, mm -hmm. regular meat and potatoes kind of fella. So, but they do that and, and we have chaperones during the program. So it's monitored and, and they're really good. And I check them once on a blue moon, but yeah. Okay. It's a network of sorts because for example, when a student of ours say lands up at Stanford or MIT, we already have some students there. Mm -hmm. We get in touch. Mm -hmm. send some videos or send a picture or something oh that's sweet okay so at least it's like even if they don't you know stay friends forever there's still that like network yes and there's safety net as well of having those yeah. all those connections but you know you said stay friends forever many times a person from arizona will meet somebody from california or wherever mm -hmm. and they'll bond and then they'll decide they want to go to the same school now. oh that's and they, nice yeah and so that's cool that's yeah cool. it is yeah. And, and a very important part of the whole program selection, ultimately, and this is a, an intangible, right, is how do we get 12 individuals to work well together, mm -hmm. relatively close quarters. We, you know, we pay all the, the bills, mm -hmm. pays for the room and board, food, extracurricular activities on the weekends, mm -hmm. everything. And then we give them a stipend at the end, Okay. faculty as well. And so... Uh, my goal for them is to to be a really cohesive, good group. We don't like clicks, and that's why I keep it at twelve. Yeah. Experimented with twenty. It's not the same, you know. Okay. So you think it will stay at twelve? Forever. Forever. Okay. As long as I am in the program. That's true. As long as you're in charge. I've been director for like twenty years now. So. Okay. Have you been involved since the start, or yes. okay? I was a I was a mentor to the very first student in the first program, and before it became. So what happened was it was a program that was uh, provided. We were given like $20,000 by the Anson L. Clark Foundation okay. to run the program as a test module. And the person who had the job of doing it at the time, John Burns, was chairman of biology. He had hired me. And uh, Bob Lawless was then the president. So they got the award. John ran the program. I was a mentor to a student, Benny <laughs> Wang. And uh, so that was 1992 or something, God knows. So, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, um, and then after a couple of years, John became provost and uh, the president went elsewhere. And so they asked me to take it over. And so then I started running the program. So. Okay, very cool. So in it from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, but in the early days, we had to go and advertise. Of you course, know? yeah. <laughs> Nobody knew us, so we get 40 applicants for 12 slots. Now we got 530 or something. Yeah. Oh, my God. And when does your application close this year? Is it January? So it closes in early February. Okay. We're working on a, on a, um, a new uh, platform for applications, and that hasn't come to pass yet. 
Oh no. Yeah, yeah. It's almost done, but but they're working on it. So it'll okay. Be, it'll be okay, ready. good. It'll be it'll be up and running. Okay. And so how for this upcoming year will they will they hopefully be able to do it through the platform then? Yes, or? yes, definitely. Yeah, okay, it's a really good platform. It's it's the same platform that we use for our uh, uh, admission to the honors college. Mm -hmm. So students apply to Texas Tech, they apply in the general admission. Then okay. to apply to the honors college, of which I'm the dean, they have to write separate uh, separate essays and make a separate application. We tend to use that same base platform for the Clark scholars. Okay. And that's that where we're sense. having a little bit of issues, but I think our IT people will solve it. They'll solve it, yeah. They got time still. No, they better get it done. Like, yeah. Before the holidays, for sure. Yes, yes. yeah. Because <laughs> that's when I'm sure everyone will be starting to do it and yes. be a little bit anxious. I get lots. I've gotten scores of emails and phone calls from all over. The I'm sure, I'm sure, panicking a little bit. Yes. <laughs> okay. And so. For these students, how can they make themselves a little bit more competitive? If they were to apply to this program, like what would you suggest that they do to I prepare? Say, I would say um, be themselves. Don't be somebody they're not mm -hmm. because it, 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 we could tell after all this time. Um, I'd like to see people who spend um, considerable time doing one or two things in volunteering Mm -hmm. Okay, instead of doing 500 things, mm -hmm. not being yep. able to reflect on them, that's yep. very important. Yes. You know, when you choose something to do out of your own time, then do it, do deep, do it deep. Mm -hmm. do, make it meaningful to you and the people with whom you work. Yep, that's what we always try and tell our students too, because, you know, if you do a million activities, you're not good at anything really. Right. Most likely not very good at anything, so you might as well pick something and excel at that. So I think that's yeah, so good that. advice, no matter what program, no matter what you want to do. Yeah. So I like it. <laughs> yep, it might do, <laughs> no matter what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, perfect, okay. And can you kind of walk me through what happens when the students do enter in the program? Like how, is there a certain curriculum you guys kind of follow year to year or? Yeah, yeah, there's no formal work. curriculum though at the very front end, we go through all the basic things. So we have the, them, because they're doing research. Mm -hmm. And so at the national level, there's something called the responsible conduct of research. Okay. Students have to um, you know, go through a training. So we have a training module. We have our, our um, professionals from the vice president for research office, and they'll come in and, and talk about ethical issues, plagiarism. Mm -hmm. you know, using data appropriately. We talk about all those sorts of things. We okay. have to go to the library and the librarians talk about acquisition of information appropriately. Mm -hmm. then have the police come in, the local Texas Tech uh, campus, wow. talking about safety, you know, because okay. these are young people and, and mm -hmm. I am responsible. I am their parent for those seven weeks. Okay. Yeah. So yes, indeed. So it's very important. We have a curfew. Uh, we have okay. chaplains in the dorms. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we don't want to be restrictive, but at the same time, you have to be very careful because they're young. Yeah. People. They yeah. are young, yeah. We have some students who have already, who are past Clark scholars from last year, who've been admitted to many schools, but they've also applied to Texas Tech and are communicating with their parents. And, uh -huh. and, and you know, it's so cool because they are still thinking about the excellent experience they got here and <laughs> they need to consider us. And so it's just, you know, difficult decision for them to make now, but I'm so happy that at least they're considering us. Yeah, I'm sure that they can pick from pretty much anywhere. It's a tough decision. Yes, yes. I'm so happy for them. So, so yeah. yeah. Okay. So then after you have your initiation, then they kind of go into the research okay. side of it. Yeah, we got distracted. Okay. Sorry. So then you have the initial, uh, once they've done that and they get their IDs and they get all their rules and regs and they have to do that 50 push-ups to you know, stay up with me. <laughs> Be edited out, but uh, <laughs> but then they we have a luncheon meeting with the mentors. Okay. Now one of the things ahead of time, once we select somebody, say you get selected, you will already be assigned a mentor who's a group okay. to work with you because they've seen your application, and so we put them in touch with one another, and mm -hmm. then the mentor will oftentimes send them information to read and how to prepare before coming in. Oh, okay. Sense of what they're going to be involved in, mm -hmm. and at least for the most part, the uh, Clark Scholars are an amazing group of individuals, mm -hmm. and they are always up to the task. 
I'm it's sure. Awesome. And, uh, and so then we have this lunch and, and then the professors will meet with them, I introduce them all and all. And um, then they'll go and off to the labs they go. Wow. And, and then, yeah, I sign off on them until the weekend. And every Thursday though, we have a seminar. Okay. So the, 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 the scholars give me a list of topics they may be interested in. It could oh. be politics, it could be environment, it could be anything about health. And I'll bring in specialists to come and talk and we have a discussion. And oh, then, cool. uh, on the weekends, we do little camping trips, hiking, uh, or we'll go, we have places in West Texas where uh, there are archeological sites, we'll go to mm -hmm. those. Or we'll go to places where there are prehistoric uh, artifacts. Uh huh. Like 250 million year old bone samples or jaw samples. And, and wow. they will get to work in environments where research is ongoing currently. Uh huh. So wow. Just spend a hot summer's day in the <laughs> middle of late June or early July. Uh huh. They'll be like wasted. <laughs> Two years ago, they wanted to go on this big six mile hike. So I took them to a canyon. It's called mm -hmm. Paladuro Canyon. It's about two hours north of here. It's actually longer or wider than the Grand Canyon, but it's not deep. Wow. Yes. It's the second largest canyon in these United States. Wow. Anyway, so we went and we did this lighthouse trail hike. Mm -hmm. So we all brought water and they were all, you know, had all their stuff. And by the time we got there, they had all wilted. And I had to bring my water. And I'm like, you old man. Like, yeah. So they weren't ready for it. <laughs> then I had to drive back too, right? Yeah. They're, all yeah. they're all sleeping, dead from the sun. Yeah. It can take it out of you, that sun, if you're not used to it. That's right. That's, right. Yeah. That's so, too funny. So the, so the key there is, right? So we go through this whole thing and we do these weekend activities. And of course, we have challenge tennis matches against yours truly. <laughs> Tennis, you know. But the point is, I like to see the group become cohesive uh -huh. and work together. So we'll have people in the humanities who are really best buds with their roommate who could be in engineering. Mm -hmm. And they get to see the other side of each other and, and those sorts of things. And I think that's the other big goals that they, they recognize the value of good relationships. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. So you try and kind of make these events so that they do have that opportunity to intermingle. Mm -hmm. um, and then when they are in the labs, do they usually eat dinner together afterwards or is it kind of just like a free for all? Yeah. So um, a lot of intermingling the, there too. Okay. Yeah. So basically the students from the health sciences center may tend to, you know, come back together because we'll pick them up and bring them mm -hmm. at a slightly different time. So they, for the most part, I think, not all of them would eat together. They're in the same dorm and they okay. have the dining facilities. They may vary those things a little. Okay. Uh, but on the weekend, still get a lot. Them, yeah, and I'll take them out to eat on the weekend, of course. Okay. So, <laughs> of course, yeah. In some cases, I had to deliver special pizza to students after some <laughs> some event, and some of them wanted special sauces and they wanted just the ranch dressing and just of and course catered to them. So it's kind of fun. <laughs> That's cute. I like that. Okay. So they really become almost like a little family for those, those seven weeks. And I've read letters of recommendation for many of them and mm -hmm. many of them stay in touch with me still after seven, eight, ten years. Uh-huh. So really Fantastic. Good. And where have like they, um, like what kind of fields do they work in? Do they work kind of all over the place now? Yes. Like all you name the it, place. they've done it. They've, they've, they, you know, they've won so many national awards. They've taken their research. The research has been published in many cases. Mm -hmm. Many of them have won the National Goldwater Scholarships. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they've uh, got all sorts of awards. I had a young student from Pennsylvania who worked in my lab in 2012. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so she went to Stanford and did environment. And I was interested in building a little device to purify water because I'm a microbiologist. Mm -hmm. came and she had an environmental perspective and was interested in that. So. We worked together and uh, she helped refine the device that I had and then she took it to all the national fairs. She got to, you know, meet Obama. Even. Wow. Yes, yeah, she went to the White House. She got uh, some big award from a young investigator thing. She went to Kenya, I think it was, for two weeks. Uh, then she came back. She got in Popular Mechanics a National uh, Top 10 Inventions of the Year Award. 
Wow. Okay. Then she was at Stanford. She got the gold water. I wrote a letter. Mm -hmm. She applied for the Rhodes Scholarship. I wrote a letter. And now she's at Oxford. As a oh my Rhodes. goodness. And so we have great students. Yeah, it sounds like it. And would you say that this like open stores for them or do you think that they would still achieve all these amazing things without this program? Well, yeah, I, mm -hmm. I would think that, and that's my hope is that program is not the important piece. Mm -hmm. Program is one piece in the future. Mm -hmm. Give them perhaps the confidence to do something. Good. Or the recognition that perhaps research is not for me. Mm -hmm. okay. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Know, each of us is different. And uh -huh. so, but the point is that it gave them an ability to think clearly, to analyze things. So no matter what field you go into, you have to think, analyze, decide, discuss, mm -hmm. apply. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. research and everywhere else. That's awesome. Okay, cool. And what would you say like the biggest challenges those students do face when they come into the program? The challenges they face? Well, occasionally, you know, um, they may not have the, say, some high level statistical skills. Mm -hmm. for for example, classic case last year. So in two programs, in two research environments, uh, they had to learn this program called R, the letter R. And so um, it's a computer program to help do certain statistical analyses. And so the two students registered for a course that was being offered at the time, just mm -hmm. before. And so their mentors agreed that they take the course. Normally we don't do courses or anything. And uh, they did the class and they both got A's. <laughs> and so and they were able, so they got a credit and they learned something and you know that was a challenge that they overcame during the program so they could wow. improve their research more fully. Okay. Awesome, okay. As it were. Sometimes it takes an adjustment to the research environment. Mm -hmm. So you you may not get along with everybody hunky dory mm -hmm. work with, well with your mentor, but then somebody in the lab may not be happy with you for whatever reason. Uh -huh. I have to deal with some of those things. But that's, mm -hmm. that's very rare, you know. Mm -hmm. Most part, it's, it's really good. Okay, yeah, of course, like, it's going to happen, unfortunately. But that's a good lesson for the kids. That's right, and me, you know, selection of mentors. <laughs> that's true, that's very true, yes. <laughs> and speaking of, do you, I guess the mentors must change every year because it depends on the students and their interests. So do you have like a pool that you kind of pick from? Are they all Texas Tech affiliated or will you go to like the outside community as well? No, uh, all are just Texas Tech University. Okay. That's in the endowment. So we have a million dollar endowment eventually mm -hmm. when the program was endowed to the university. And mm -hmm. so we spend the, the, the proceeds from the interest, you know, mm -hmm. program. But the, uh, the whole thing is, um, yeah, only Texas Tech faculty are involved. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there may be more than one faculty okay. member serving as mentors. Okay. The project. So somebody, a couple of years ago, there was a computer science professor and a professor in political science. Mm, okay. Yeah, working together on a project with a student. That's pretty cool. And what was that project? Do you remember what it was? I do. I do. <laughs> it was something to, uh, and it was looking at an interstate, believe this or not, uh, and all the counties in Texas that are along that interstate, mm -hmm. incidents of, um, I, it's interesting that this purpose is in political science because it was the incidence of heart disease, oh. distance from big towns, and, and there were this huge, it was a lot of data that had to be collected. Uh -huh. Tended it, I think, into, you know, beyond Texas, into Arkansas, Louisiana and all of that off that same uh, okay. East West I-20. So interesting. And did the student go out and collect this data from hospital? Like, how did they go about doing yeah. this? So they, they have access to data from hospitals and community places. Okay. And so they had to go in and get those data and then wow. using computer programs to do the analysis and then make sense of it. Yeah, the most important part. Understand it. Fascinating. Yeah, wow. Okay. And do you remember... Was there a correlation between how far they were from the cities? Yeah, it turns out oh, that the further you went from the city. So one would think that someone, say, in Dallas, mm -hmm. a stress environment, mm -hmm. course, would be, people would be more prone to having uh, heart attacks this than the other. But it turns out that people actually in rural areas have a higher incidence and, and the treatments are not readily available. Mm -hmm. so 
So there's actually something about the treatment place. And so this, I mean, there's so many things, you know, if you think confounding factors, diet, genetics, you know, exactly. exercise regimen, this, this, mm -hmm. this, this, this uh, affect these things. So it's not okay. a simple. Of just distance. Yeah, of course. That's really interesting though. Okay. Hmm. I'm trying to think what other questions I have. Um, oh, well, like what's the biggest takeaway you kind of hope these students get by the end of the camp? Yeah, I think, um, I, I think there would be twofold. One is the knowledge that they can actually make a contribution mm -hmm. to the generation of new information. If you think about it, right, what is research? Doing something for the first time in the history of mankind. Mm -hmm. This is pretty mm -hmm. crazy. If you think about it, right? Mm -hmm. Even if you see what Cicero's writings meant or whatever, right? And, and the humor that Cicero and had in, when, when his work was done. Or if you're trying to do some work in cancer biology or in high energy physics, mm -hmm. that's the, the, the brilliance of generating new knowledge. Mm -hmm. that, that's one thing, the passion piece. I mean, that's what happened to me as a youngster growing up in India a billion years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing is I think the good relationships with, with mm -hmm. the individuals with whom they've interacted. Okay, yeah. that's amazing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a question about the age. So you said they had to be 17. It's not 17 by the time they apply, just 17 by the time they go to the program, right? Yes, 17 by the time the program starts. Okay. So if they turn 17 July, like 15th, it's like, sorry. That's right. It's a heartbreaker for me. Yeah, I, that is. It is because, because we have so many restrictions here, you know, with mm -hmm. the, on campus. And so we have, I want to be, yeah. And they, so they can apply. After their junior year, okay, summer, or after the senior year, okay, kind of before uni. Yeah, yeah. so there are two opportunities. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so they could always come back, and with such a small field too, you kind of have to have these restrictions in play, otherwise, yeah, it becomes too much. So it does, it does. yeah. And there's another interesting thing. So some, many times, students who come to the program, while they may be doing research in chemistry, are interested in playing the piano. So okay. Then, uh, we, our music department opens up the, the, the practice pianos to them. Mm. So at 7.30 in the morning, some of them would, would be going and playing piano. Wow, they're so dedicated to everything. Before going to do their research. Yeah. Uh, wow, okay. So they can really get a whole well-rounded education here. Absolutely. That's, That's fantastic. What, we want, at Texas Tech, we want our students, and certainly in the Honors College, to have a big broad liberal arts education mm -hmm. philosophy physics chemical engineering mm -hmm. politics and do it all fantastic okay is there anything i've missed about the program like some highlights or anything that you think that i need to know to understand yeah. more about your program well i think for me the the selfish highlight is being around these people for the future mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. all of this read the applications and in the early days when the applications were on paper I take them home at spring break and I, and I always tell people the story is sit on the living room floor with a pile of applications, a cup of tea, many cups of tea, a box of Kleenex. And they say, why the Kleenex? I say, because they're so brilliant. The essays move you. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. And you're reading so many of these high quality students too. And how do you split hairs then and say, mm -hmm. no, you can't and you can and they're both amazing. Mm-hmm. My goodness. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how you do it year after year. Narrow it down, 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 yeah. down, down. And every year I go, oh, I can't do this anymore. And then when the, in the middle of the program, I'll go to my staff people and go, I'm falling in love again. Yeah. yeah this, this, is, this is the future of us. You know, I, I tell students, I have fewer years ahead of me than behind me. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately. Ahead of them. So the future. Yeah. The future's with them. That's fantastic. You step up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very cool. Okay, anything else you want to add? No, I think this is great. So yeah. I, I hope this is okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.